If you love DL box as much as I do, you're going to love this variation. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and the constant clutter and chaos that is my fly tying bench. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I provide fly tying and fly fishing video content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. Today we're going to tie the Hurl d -all Bach. This is a fly, a simple variation of the d -all Bach, one of my favorite still water nymphs using only Coke de Leon and Ostrich Hurl and a little bit of flash. If fish are feeding on Calabatus nymphs, you're going to want to have this fly in your box. So join me at the bench, I'll show you how to tie it. Let's tie the Hurl back, an Ostrich Hurl version of a D-All back, one of my favorite Stillwater flies. I've got a Daiichi 1530 number 12 into the jaws of the vise. You could tie these as big as a 10, 12, 14. It's uh, one of my favorite uh, patterns when Calabatus nymphs are active. So for tying thread, uh, you could use gray or olive or brown tying thread. In this case, I'm using some olive. The, the thread color only really manifests itself at the uh, head of the fly when it's done. So we're just going to put a good thread base on, down to about halfway between the point to crush down barb, come up about halfway, let that thread hang. For the tail, I'm going to use some a Whiting Coke de Leon. This is a Coke Whiting tailing pack. And this is the Dark Pardo Coke de Leon tailing pack right there. So I'm just going to take a feather out of the package. And I'm just going to isolate about 8 to 10 or so fibers, like so. I'm going to pull them perpendicular to the stem. That evens up the tips. Carefully remove them once I've evened them up. And I want to tie in a tail that's about the shank length long. So I'm going to come in and get a couple of wraps just to get that on. And just use at this point to gauge my tail length. So I think that's a little long. I don't think the fish care, but just pull it in. That'll gather it. And once I'm happy with the tail length, I'm just going to walk that thread back. And as I get near the bend of the hook, I'm just going to reduce the tension on my wrap slightly so I don't accidentally flare these out. I want them kind of gathered. Then it's going to walk the thread forward, get up near the eye, about two eye widths back, trim away the excess. For my ribbing, I like a little bit of flash, so I'm going to use some of my favorite ribbing materials, crinkle mirror flash. If you don't have this handy, you could certainly use Mirage Opal. Uh, mylar or flashaboo. You could use pearl flashaboo, you could use pearl crystal flash, um, or whatever other color of flashy ribbing you care to use. I'm just going to take a single strand of this from the package, hold it up along the near side of the hook, get that tied in, and secure this down the near side, the side closest to the camera in this case, all the way down to the base of the tail, like so. Next, we're going to tie in the beard. So we're going to get it tied in in preparation for folding it back when we finish the fly. So I'm going to take my tying thread right up to the hook. I can't go any further, it'll fall off. And we're going to use exactly the same material we did for the tail, and that's the Coke de Leon. So I'm just going to isolate again about uh, eight to 10 fibers or so, just a a clump that looks good in your eyes, so there's probably obviously a little more than 8 to 10 there. There's probably 15 or so. I'm not counting them. I just get a, a clump I like. These are pretty fine fibered, so I'd probably overdo it a little bit just so they stand out. So I'm just going to place those onto the top of the sh shank here. So they're about the uh, half the shank length or three quarters of the shank length long. Get them tied in place and secure those down the shank. When I get just past the hook point, I'm just going to come in with my scissors, trim them on a bit of an angle like so. 
right down to the base of the tail. And then for the body, we're going to use some natural gray ostrich hurl. One of my favorite tying materials for still water flies and probably very underrated. You could certainly tie this fly in other colors besides natural gray. Olive or tan would be good combinations or a blend of one strand of olive and one strand of tan to sort of give you that calabatus color. I'm going to take two strands, pull them together. I've used my thumbnail to rake off the, the part of the hurl off the uh, base of the fibers here just to give a nice good firm tie-in and not to create any more bulk than we have to. We want to keep this fly nice and dainty and slim just like the natural calabatus nymphs were using to, su to suggest with this fly. And again, don't go too far forward with your tying thread. We're going to stroke those two fibers together. And because we tied them in together, they are going to behave as one. So we're just going to wind this up. A little gray fuzzball going forward. Just like this, all the way up. Get up to where your thread is hanging. And if anything, don't crowd the head. If you're worried about one step more, or one wrap more, or staying put, I would always opt for staying put. So we're just going to get those tied off. Come in with our scissors. Trim, carefully trim away the excess. We're just going to take our crinkle flash ribbing material, and in this case, I'm going to counterwind it so it stands out a little bit, and doesn't get as lost in the fibers. And just again, I'm not going for any sort of anatomical correctness here. I'm just sort of weaving the the crinkle mirror flash ribbing through the ostrich hurl just so it'll radiate out and imitate some of the trap gases the natural mayfly nymphs use to aid both their ascent to the surface and final transformation into the done stage. So we tied it off a couple over top, fold it back a little bit. We've got that tied off. I'm going to come in, trim away the excess, and take my tying thread right up to that hook eye. Take the um, thread and hold it up like so. And then I'm just going to I moisten my fingers just, just so I can help sweep everything back. I'm just going to carefully sweep those fibers back underneath the hook. Do that again. Again, you can play with this a couple of times until you get it where you want it. And it looks like I've got a few fibers that don't want to come along, so we have a cure for that called scissors. So we're just going to come in and I will just take the scissors and trim away those errant fibers anyway, like so. Being careful obviously not to trim the thread. We'll spin the bobbin counterclockwise. That'll flatten our wraps. That'll help cover up those little errant fibers that are sticking up. Got a little bit of ostrich hurl from that tie off so I'm just going to be careful and not to accidentally trim my thread and then we're just going to build up a little neat dark head here bring our whip finisher in like so disengage trim away the excess and there you have it a little hurl bock you can fish this cast and retrieve using a floating line, a midge tip, slow hand twist retrieve with pauses. And as simple as it is, it also hangs very well under a strike indicator. One of my favorite suggestive calibatus nymph patterns. Fish love this thing.